In this video, we're going to talk about a couple of graphing calculator tricks that we can use to help us solve certain motion problems in physics. Let's start with this one. Four turtles are running towards a pizza that is 50 meters away. Initially, they are running two meters a second, but after smelling that sweet saw, they speed up at a rate of two and a half meters per second squared. How much time does it take them to reach the pizza? Okay, so I'm going to start by writing down any information that's given to me. And I know right away that the initial velocity is two. Uh, and the acceleration is 2.5. I would make them both positive since it says the object is speeding up, and in order to speed up, the velocity and acceleration have to be in the same direction. Then it asks me to find time, and it tells me the pizza is 50 meters away, which in my mind I would say 50 is the final position they reach, and the initial position is 0. Of course, you could write that as delta x equals 50 if you want. Now, to find t, I'm going to be using my position equation with acceleration, time, initial velocity, and initial position. Remember that this is our graphable position equation. Um, but before we graph it to solve this problem, I'm going to talk about how we would algebraically solve for the amount of time that it takes to reach the pizza. To algebraically solve for the amount of time it takes to reach the pizza, you start plugging in your numbers. So I would write x is 50 half of the acceleration, half of 2.5 is 1.25 t squared plus, let's see, the initial velocity is 2, so 2t, two and the, oh, sorry, that should say x naught, not v naught, uh, and the initial position is 0, so I don't need to add anything. Then you would try and solve for t, which would become problematic because you're going to get, subtract 50, you're going to get all of that on the right and 0 on the left, and there's no way to get t by itself. What you have to do is use the quadratic formula. That's right, where your a term is 1.25, your b term is 2, and your c term is negative 50. So the quadratic formula, we usually use it to find x, um, but in this case, our x is t. So you'd write t equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then you would plug in a, b, and c. Um, this can sometimes be a fairly tedious process, so before we even begin to talk about how to graph your position equation and, and use it to find certain things, let's talk about how to graph a quadratic equation to find values of zero, answers of zero, because you might not have used your graphing calculator to solve the quadratic formula in a while. Here's how you do it. You open your calculator, you go to y equals, and you plug in your equation on the right side. So 1.25x squared plus 2x minus 50. Then you graph it. It'll take you a while to get a good window of the graph, but what you're looking for is the function to cross zero, the x-axis. Because what I can do is I can figure out where on this graph will the function be equal to zero? Because that's exactly what this equation is trying to tell me. What value of t is going to give me an answer of zero? So your calculator has a function to find these zeros. It's called zero. You press second trace, which is the calcula uh, calculating features, and you go down to zero. Okay, now you have to pick which zero you want. Um, this zero here, this would give you uh, a time where uh, <laughs> you they reach the pizza, but in the past, like somehow they started at the pizza in the past. That's not what you want. You want this positive value of time, because that's the, the real answer that they're going to get to. So I go to the left of where this intersection occurs at zero, then I go to the right, I press enter and guess, uh, whatever, I never guessed. It tells you, okay, so 5.57. That is a value of time that will give you a position of zero. Congratulations, you just used the quadratic formula on your graphing calculator. Let's write that down, 5.57. So one answer is 5.57 seconds. The other answer would to this quadratic equation would be negative if you used raw algebra and you would just ignore it because it didn't happen in the past. Okay, so that's how you use the quadratic formula um, and how you can use a graphing calculator to solve the quadratic formula, but there's a much quicker way to do this, I think, um, and it comes from graphing the equation. So let's get rid of all this work, and let's think about this as a graph. So if I was going to graph this equation, I would write x equals, I wouldn't use 50, I'd say x equals, and then half the acceleration, 1.25t squared plus the initial velocity, 2, t, um, and then, I don't like that plus sign, there we go, and then I wouldn't add anything for the initial position because it's zero. 
Okay, so if I look at this equation, I know that I can graph it. Um, if I were to draw a little rough sketch, it starts at zero, has an initial steepness of positive two, and then I know that this being positive means it will smiley face. Yay, smiley face. Um, and what I, this is kind of weird, what I want to do is I want to figure out when, so at what time, will this graph reach 50? Um, and there's, there's kind of a quick way to do this in your calculator to find when the object will equal 50. Here's what you do. You graph the equation. So in this case, I would do 1.5, sorry, 1.25x squared plus 2x. So I graph that equation. Um, and then I'm also going to graph a straight line at 50. So that way, when I graph this, oh, it's right there. I can use my intersect feature. First, let me zoom out a little bit. Or I'll just change my window. My y max is 50. I want to see above it. So let's say 60. Great. OK, so now I have a line at 50. And what I can do is use the intersect feature to figure out where, at what time, um, my function reaches a position of 50. So go to second, trace, intersect. Then we go to the left of this intersection, press enter. Then to the right of this intersection, press enter. Guess, I never guess, press enter. And it tells me, uh -huh, at 5.57x, which is our time value, so 5.57 seconds, you're at a position of 50. So for me, that's a much quicker way to figure out um, using a graphing calculator the time that you reach that position. Now, the only time that you aren't going to use your graphing calculator uh, is if the problem isn't actually giving you numbers, it's giving you all variables. Um, and that, that will happen uh, on, the, on things like the AP test. And in that case, you would need to use the quadratic formula. Um, but we'll, we'll work on some example problems of that much, much later. Let's do one more problem where graphing can give us uh, quick answers. A homeless coyote on rollerblades has a rocket strapped to his back and is skating 25 meters per second east. He fires the rocket hoping to speed up, but he has it on backwards. This gives him an acceleration of 2.4 meters per second squared to the west. How far does the coyote go before coming to a stop? How long does it take the coyote to return to the position that he fired the rocket from? All right, this is so easy to answer if you write a graphable equation. So let's do that. Let's write a graphable equation. First of all, we have an initial velocity of 25 meters per second east. So v naught equals 25 meters per second east. I'm going to write a little positive to remind myself. If they say east, they want it to be positive. Now, if the rocket is firing in the opposite direction, like imagine here is your really fat coyote. He's having a great time. He's on roller skates. I don't know, a little tail. Okay, so he's on roller skates and he's got the rocket, but the rocket is firing backwards. Oh no, this is terrible. That means that this coyote is moving forward, but the acceleration from the rocket is in the opposite direction, backwards. So first it's going to slow him down, then speed him up in the opposite direction. Um, the west part of that acceleration is telling me exactly what I've drawn here that they need to be in opposite directions. So negative 2.4 meters per second squared. OK. Now, to figure out how long it takes t, um, I might write t equals question mark just to remind myself that's what I'm going to be looking for. I need to think about the positions first. So let's just assume he starts at 0, since it gives us no other indication of where he starts or stops. OK, this is enough information to write out a graphable position equation with this same equation that we've been using. So here's my math-friendly graphable equation. Half of negative 2.4 is negative 1.2 t squared uh, plus 25 t. So that's my graphable equation. And if I want to sketch that graph, um, I'll sketch it maybe right here. I know that the initial steepness 
is a positive 25, so it has a positive slope that starts at zero. And then that negative tells me that this graph is going to frowny face. Mm, something like that. It's great. It should be more like that. Okay. That this graph is going to frowny face. Okay. How far does the coyote go before coming to a stop? Well, if I can graph this equation, I know that the coyote will come to a stop when the slope on this graph is zero. And that's because the slope on a position versus time graph is velocity. Well, that feature of a quadratic or a curving graph is something that's called a maximum. And if you graph this equation, your calculator can give you the exact value of that maximum, both the time and the position. So let's do that. So we grab our graphing calculators, and the equation that we're going to put in is negative 1.2x squared plus 25x, and then we're going to graph it. Yes, looks exactly like what we just drew, except you know what, I should probably extend this axis a little bit so that I can see it cross. Okay, so let's talk about how to find that maximum. Oh, and if you're having trouble finding this window, here's, here's the window that I came up with um, that helped me see the function. So you can use this window if you're having trouble finding this function. Great, back to the graph. So to find the maximum, you would go to second, trace, down to maximum. Okay, now you go to the left of where that maximum is, then to the right of that maximum. Guess, and boom. Now you know that uh, the maximum distance traveled where the slope is zero and therefore the velocity is zero so the coyote has come to a stop. This occurs at x equals 10.4 so that's the time 10.4 seconds. So I'll write 10.4 seconds and the position is y equals 130.2 so that's our x position 130.2. So here I can write 130, we'll just say 130.2 meters. Great, so now I've marked this, um, and if I was justifying my work uh, for, say, the AP test, then sketching this graph and saying that you did it in your calculator, um, and that you know the object has stopped because the slope is zero, that is totally acceptable um, for justifying your answer. So that's the answer to how far? 130.2. That's the answer for how far does the coyote go before coming to a stop. Now let's ask this question. How long does it take the coyote to return to the position he fired the rocket from? So the coyote started here at zero. What this is asking us to do is find when does the coyote come back to zero? So basically on the way up, the coyote is slowing down to a stop, which is 130.2 meters. Then the rocket is going to continue to accelerate him, but now in the opposite direction. So now he has negative slopes, so negative velocities. He's moving backwards until eventually he reaches that point that he fired the rocket from. Well, it might be obvious what you're supposed to do here. You can use the zero function to figure out what value that occurs at. So I can go to my graphing calculator, and now I can use that zero function, second trace, zero to figure out where does this graph cross the x-axis. Okay, so I go down, go to the left, enter, and I go to the right of it, enter, and I guess. It tells me right there that I've returned to position zero at 20.83 repeating um, x, which is our value of time, the, the times for these different positions. So let's say 20.8 seconds. Do you notice anything interesting about that? 20.8 is twice 10.4, which means that the coyote, with this constant acceleration, spent as much time slowing down, moving right, as he did speeding up and moving left in the opposite direction. So there's a certain symmetry to these constantly accelerated motions. 
Um, and occasionally, like if, if you knew this right away, you wouldn't have to graph and find that zero. If you could just say, oh, I know that if the maximum is here and it started at zero, that this time when it comes back to the x-axis, that's going to be another 10.4 seconds. That is totally a justifiable way to explain your reasoning and show your, show your work. So yeah, there are a lot of different tricks that we can use our graphing calculators for to help us with these motion problems. Um, hopefully this helped you to see how we can use things like maximum to find on a position versus time graph where the velocity is zero. Uh, and we didn't talk about this, but you can also use minimums. So like if this was a frowny face graph, I'm sorry, a smiley face graph, and you needed to find the minimum, that would also be a slope of zero. You can go to second, calc, and instead of maximum, you can use minimum. That would also give you um, the, the place where that slope is zero. So you can do all kinds of stuff. You can use the zero function. You can do minimum, maximum. You know, we didn't talk about this, but if you didn't know there's a value function, like if I wanted to know how long it took the coyote to go 20 meters, I can, or I'm sorry, how far the coyote has gone in 20 seconds, you can click value, and it says x equals to so time input 20 seconds. It'll tell me the position that it's at at that 20 seconds. So you can use that uh, function pretty easily. But yeah, so value, zero, minimum, maximum, these are all useful tools that we can use with our graphing calculator to solve um, different things about motion problems. I hope that this was maybe new information for you and that it was helpful because you are great and awesome and you are rocking physics. Congratulations, this video is over.